this costs just 250. You can't get this sound for 250. Did I read the box wrong? Is did they send me something more expensive? Because no way. Okay, let's start today's video. And what I have here today is SMSL DA9 integrated amplifier. And this is basically a bare bone integrated amp, meaning it doesn't have integrated streamer or several digital inputs plus many analog inputs. It's actually a very simple integrated amp, but for 250 and for the sound fidelity it provides, I just don't care. Now let me quickly introduce you to its uh, built-in features, connectivity. Um, it's a small device, as you can see, not much bigger than the average DAC out there. How is this possible? Well, because this is a class D amp, meaning it's much more efficient, uh, consumes less power, power supply can be smaller, uh, amplification modules are smaller, and that's why we get this small package, but it still has a lot of power in it. It's like 50 watts into 8 ohm speaker. But that power almost doubles into 4 ohms load. It's 90 watts. And then again, it goes to 150 watts if you feed a 2 ohms load. Basically, there is no such speaker that's like nominally a, a 2 ohms, but this means that this have power reserves. And when you have low impedance speakers with occasional dips in the frequency spectrum when it comes to impedance, this will not be stressed. This is a powerful amp. And again, doing that in such a small amp is possible only by using class D. If we were uh, looking at a typical class A, B, or don't even start about class A amps, this would have to be a much bigger box. That said, uh, the class D modules that SMSL used are sourced from a German manufacturer, Infineon. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, they used two of the modules, making this app fully balanced. And on that note, I'll quickly show you the back of the unit. So when it comes to connectivity, what we have here is just two pairs of analog inputs. One of them is your typical single-ended RCA input. The other one, the other pair, is balanced XLR input. I tried using both. If you have an opportunity to utilize balanced connection, I always suggest do that. If your DAC possess balanced outputs, and given that your cabling between single-ended and balanced is of the same quality, balanced will almost always offer some sonic benefits. So if you can use it, if not, then you have RCAs. All, all good. Other than that, the last possible input that you can use is actually a Bluetooth. And you can see here, you can screw in the Bluetooth antenna. Now, Bluetooth is a lossy connection in its nature. It's here more for convenience than for fidelity. If you opt to use it, be prepared to lose some definition, to lose some energy from the sound. And as a fidelity first type of guy, I don't really care much about it, but if you want it, it's there. And this yellow RCA output is actually a subwoofer out. And it's very nice that SMSL decided to provide this because it's not quite often seen in uh, amps at this price point. To be perfectly honest, it's not often seen in, in amps of any price point. And that leaves us with binding posts to connect your speakers. These will accept banana plugs, spades and bare wire. But have in mind that um, even though of a decent quality, these are not that big and robust as you would find in a full size amplifier. You can probably see that they're not much bigger than the RCA 
connector themselves. So that way you can assess that these are quite small. Uh, so if you use banana plugs four millimeters, that's a standard, you will have no problem attaching any cable. But when it comes to spades and especially bare wire, um, some limitations are in place. You can't just go wild with very thick cables because it would be too cramped. That said, given the price and the size of this unit uh, and for what it is, I don't really find it problematic. Uh, they're functional enough, they're quite decent, that's all okay. And now I'll quickly turn the unit on to show you the front panel. So as you can see in the front, we have one display, it's color display too, and one knob, which actually doubles as a button. So you can use it to control your volume, but you can also use it to browse menus. More convenient way to do that is by using a remote control provided in the box by SMSL. And that said, you might wonder, well, what kind of settings do we have in an integrated amp? And I'll quickly lead you through this. Now, let me quickly show you a few settings that you can alter with this amp. So, of course, you can change the volume control to big and easily readable digits. We'll show you where you're at. You can see them easily even sitting away in a couch. But uh, then you can change inputs. At the moment, you see there is an unbalanced input chosen. If I uh, move to Bluetooth, you see the Bluetooth icon, but uh, you see these two lines, one blue and one red for balanced inputs. Again, this one is unbalanced. A much more interesting thing is when you enter a menu. As you can see, again, you have input selection here, but then we have a much more interesting EQ setting. And when you enter here, you can see many different choices. The first and probably the most important one is a direct mode. This is a factory default and it's the mode when no EQ is applied. It's the most direct path for the signal to take and in my experience and to my ears, it's the cleanest, clearest sounding one with best sound staging and with best pinpointing abilities. If you decide to alter bass or treble, this amp will automatically change EQ mode to tone. Anytime you go back to direct, this bass and treble alterations will not be applied anymore. You go back to tone, you apply them again. Other than that, you have some other presets. This one, SDB, is especially interesting because it introduces something that resembles to a loudness effect. It makes everything sounds bigger, warmer, lusher. But again, as I said, at the expense of losing some of that clarity and pinpointing abilities of the direct mode, you might easily prefer this or any of these other modes. Just go through them yourself and try them out. My personal favorite was a direct other than that, we have soft clipping. It's uh, off by default. I didn't change that option because I never play my music that loud anyway. You have brightness settings for your display. And I really appreciate this one because it might not seem like that on this strong light, but late in the evening, I find this display to be very, very bright. So I much prefer it somewhere at this point. Okay, let me go back to that software version. It's 1.0, that's all. Yeah, basically that's all about features. And with that said, it's finally time to talk about sound, about sound quality. And I firstly thought it would be quite reasonable to actually pair this 250 amp with a price appropriate gear. So I connected it to LogGD30 DAC and then to ELAC, the BU 2.0 B5.2 speakers. It's a perfectly price appropriate matching. And I was really happy with the sound. I, to be perfectly honest, 
I didn't expect SMSL DA9 to sound this good. There was a lot of energy, clarity, crisp, energetic notes. And I realized these Elux and Logsdi DAC never sounded any better with any amp I paired them with. So I felt like, wow, DA9 could probably serve in an even more advanced system. I, I, I'm, I'm maybe not hearing its full potential in this budget-oriented setting. So I quickly moved from, from that to using it in my own system, which basically consists of Dana Fripp's RS2 DAC, Hegel H90 integrated amp and CAF LS50 speakers. And I just inserted DA9 instead of my Hegel into this mix. It's a wildly price inappropriate match because both speakers and DAC are several times more expensive than the amp itself. And I was fully prepared uh, to feel stupid because I did that, especially because CAF LS50s are somewhat demanding load. They're, they're not easy to control. They're just 85 dB sensitivity. They also have some impedance dips. They're not an easy load for, for amplifiers. I started listening and just after a few songs I realized there is no obvious shortcoming that I'm hearing that I would fully expect from a 250 amp to hear some shortcoming immediately. Nothing of this sort happened. And what I heard, let's start first with the bass line. It was so punchy, so well controlled. Uh, the way that no amp below four or 500 ever squeezed out of LS50s. You could just feel the power and the drive of DA9, like not struggling at all. But moreover, it's not just about the bass. The energy in the whole frequency spectrum is great, like mid-range, high frequencies. Every pluck of a string, drums, cymbals, Every edge is crisp and it's energetic. It's, it's uh, forward sounding. Layering is also great. And sound staging ability of this amp completely surpass what I would expect for a 250 amp to be realistic and to be reasonable. It, 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 it provides a very clean and well-layered, well-separated soundstage. It can pinpoint instruments and notes better than basically anything I've heard below five, six, or maybe 700 US dollars. And I was really, really amazed by all of it. Now that said, uh, its tonality is on a slightly analytical side of things. You have deep punchy bass, but when it comes to mid-range and higher frequencies, they're a little bit on the aggressive side, on the edgy side. Not too much in my opinion, but a little bit. Especially when you use it in a direct mode. If you actually move to some of the EQ presets, you can pretty much change the tonality of this amp, but it will cost you some of the transparency, some of the speed, and some of that pinpointing ability. So if you decide to change tonality towards something warmer and sweeter, the sound stage will also be hazed a little bit and not as deep. Things will not be as easy to pinpoint. But in a direct mode, it's, it's just phenomenal. And they'll probably paint this whole picture better when I compare it to some of the amps that I had at hand while testing it. And first and most logical, in my opinion, comparison was with uh, NAD D3020D2. Now, this is like a four, 450 uh, US dollars amp, but this one is definitely more versatile. It has several digital inputs. It has phono input for attaching your turntable to it. 
So it's a more all-in-one package, uh, but it's pricier too. So I would expect them to be comparable in terms of sound fidelity. And there's no point of beating around the bushes. In my opinion, DA9 is simply higher quality amplifier. Now, NAD sounds warmer. It has more bass, more mid-bass. Everything is a little bit wrapped in that. So there is additional warmth to the sound and to the mid-range. But when it comes to being clear, crisp, and to controlling bass line, uh, it cannot match the A9. Also, a uh, higher spectrum, like mid-range and higher frequencies, sound a little bit grainier uh, on NAD compared to DA9. So, all said and done, DA9 is more energetic, uh, with better drive, more control over your speakers, and in my opinion, a little bit less grainy sounding. Also, when it comes to just layering, separation of the instrument and pinpointing things inside of the sound stage, there is no comparison. DA9 is like leaps and bounds ahead of NAD. Now, if you're a type of person that really favors this warm and lush type of sound, you might like NAD better. But in my opinion, you can do that by enabling EQ on SMSL DA9 and you would still get better clarity and better drive than with this one. Um, but yeah, this one is like all in one device with a lot of digital inputs, phono input and so on and so on. So if that's something you need, it's still a viable option. But if we talk solely about sound fidelity, um, the A9 here is a clear winner. Now next, I moved to comparing it with uh, Yamaha WXA50. I currently loaned that to a friend, but I had it, I compared them directly. And that is again an all-in-one solution, even maybe more so than a NAD, because it has a digital streamer, it has a DAC, it has an am amplification section, all you need to do is attach Ethernet cable to it and boom, great music, great sound is coming from it. In that sense, it easily justifies its price point of like 500 uh, US dollars. But I just compared for the sake of testing and comparing amplification section of the Yamaha by attaching my RS2 DAC to it. The same thing was done with NAD, by the way. That said, DA9 sounded punchier than Yamaha. Its bass carried more energy. A same thing with leading edges of notes. Just more energy, more bite. And finally, the sound felt a little bit more organic, less grainy. In comparison, Yamaha sounded a little dry and grainy. And finally, sound staging is again really great on DA9. I could more easily pinpoint where things are, and they just sounded more believably placed inside of that virtual space between and behind the speakers. And um, that's really great because I regard Yamaha highly. It's a great sounding all-in-one solution. But this 250 small amp is outperforming it. So finally, I actually compared it, of course, I, I, I was going to do that with my Hegel H90, which is like eight times the price of the A9. And H90 was better in terms of having more subtlety. What's a little bit forward and edgy with DA9 was more relaxed with Hegel. H90 could develop deeper sound stage, but not losing any of the details in the process. They just sounded more natural and more unforced. 
So you get the same amount of details and clarity and transparency, but delivered in a somewhat more natural way, a little bit more spacious and with fuller mid-bass and mid-range. That said, just the fact that I'm actually seriously sitting here and comparing SMSL DA9 with Hegel H90 is such a great place to be in for SMSL. Even though it cannot fully reach the level of performance of H90, it's not that far behind either. This amp is just an insane value. And they can easily imagine systems having like four or five hundred bucks source, like a DAC or CD player, and then four, five, six hundred bucks speakers, and this 250 amp. And in many cases, in, in many of these scenarios, the amp would actually be the strongest link in that system. And the way to further improve sound would be to upgrade your speakers first, probably, then your source, and leave the 250 amp there. It's that good. It's basically a market disruptor product. It's something that I will recommend a lot in the future to my friends, to my acquaintances, and not even just for like two or three hundred, even up to like six, seven, eight hundreds, I cannot think of anything sounding better than it. I can think of more versatile things, having uh, digital inputs, streamers, phono inputs, uh, maybe simply more analog inputs for those of you that still roll with uh, CD players, DACs, tuners, things like that you might not be well served with this particular amp. But if you're like me, if you have this minimalist approach, just one source connected to the amp, man, this is the one that I will be recommending until I hear anything better. But that said, please do have in mind its tonality. It's a little bit on the tidier, more controlled, energetic side of things. It's not warm and fuzzy and sweet sounding amp. You can make it be that way, but you will lose some of its clarity and some of its sound staging abilities in the process. So lastly, I'll just make some recommendation for pairings. Don't pair it with already analytical sounding gear. For example, if you pair it with slightly analytical and flat sounding DAC, such as Topping E30, it will combine to sound too much like that. If you pair it to a analytical and bright sounding speakers without much warmth, for example, monitor audio bronze or something like that, it will lean too much towards that edgy analytical sound. But I think the, the sound quality of this amp is so good that it deserves system built around it. It deserves for you to actually take some care and some attention into putting that system. For example, using a full-bodied sounding source such as shit modi multibit and using speakers that are not overly analytical and bright, this amp will be so hard to beat. And you would basically have to go much, much higher, like five times this price to gain any meaningful improvement in the sound quality. And that would be all for today, guys. Now, just before I end this video, I'll tease a little something and it's stopping D70S. It's a very interesting DAC. I will be reviewing it soon. So if you like this video, click that button, subscribe, share it with your friends, consider becoming a patron, etc., etc. See you next time. Bye.